If I were to ask you to come up with a list of revolutionary cars, what would be the first to come to mind? To me, there's one car that stands out above all else and truly changed the blueprint of modern design. Big claims for such a little car, right? Now to truly appreciate how the Mini changed the face of motoring, I have to take you back to 1950s Britain, which is pretty appropriate considering the weather that we have today. Do you remember the Suez Canal that was dominating your news feed earlier in the year? Well, back in the 1950s that was a thing too, for very different reasons though. It led to a fuel crisis in Britain, which meant fuel had to be rationed. All of a sudden, those bigger, more Americanized cars were no longer favored, and micro cars like the BMW i Setter bubble car were favored because they were small and economical. But let's face it, none of those cars were ever really taken seriously. Enter Sir Alec Isagonis and the original Mini. Here was a car that was small, that was compact, that was nice to drive, that was economical, and it was affordable. Everyone loved them. And it was truly revolutionary. It was one of the first cars to feature a transversely mounted engine and front wheel drive. Basically what that means is the engine was turned sideways and powered to the front two wheels. What this did was it freed up so much more space in the cabin. And I'm not kidding when I can tell you that there's enough room to fit four adults back here. Plus the design with the wheels pushed out to the four corners really aided handling. Move over, old Mini. Welcome to the world of modern technology. This is the new one. Well, technically, it's not very new because it's been around for about 20 years. But the fact that the last Mini was in production for over half a century means that this is still quite novel. Now, the first thing that people said when they saw this new shape was that it was a bit big. But that's not a bad thing really, because you see the car that Sam was driving, the old Mini, which kind of looked like a toy, it doesn't have anti-lock brake system, it doesn't have traction control, it doesn't have stability control, it doesn't have adaptive suspension, and it doesn't have airbags. What that means is that driving that car in today's modern world would feel a bit like a Houdini death trap, but not this car. This new Mini has all those technical aids and some more. And even though it carries a mini badge up front, it's built by BMW. So it's a masterpiece of engineering and build quality. Even though this car weighs twice as much as the old Mini at 2,500 pounds, its 2,000cc turbocharged engine produces about 190 horsepower, which is three times more powerful than what the old Mini had. Let's be honest here, if you've driven an old Mini, you know that it's kind of like riding a kangaroo. It's bumpy and uncomfortable. But not this car. This car has what they call adaptive suspension. That means that on the way to the racetrack, I set it in soft and comfortable mode, which makes the road like a bit of marshmallow. And now that I'm here at the track, I switch it to sport mode. And it makes it hard and sharp and gives this car that famous go-kart-like steering response that the Mini is well-renowned for. It can turn even the most ham-fisted, clumsiest driver into Lewis Hamilton. Oh, I see Sam pulling up behind me. I think he wants to have a bit of fun. Let's see if he can keep up.
Sam. Not bad for something that's about 60 years old. But you have to admit there's no match for the modern technology. Yeah, but you're comparing apples to oranges, right? I mean, come on, I was the one having the most fun out there. I do admit that having all the technology like ABS, traction control, adaptive suspension, does kind of take away some of the driver input, the feeling and the sensors. But we're on a track here, you know, and how often do you spend your days at the track? What about the real world situation when you're driving to for and from the track or you're going for groceries or you're traveling out of Colombo? What about then? How important are the driver aids to a person and to a family, to, to anybody really? Okay, yeah, well, I can't disagree with everything you're saying. And I have a feeling you have a few tests lined up. Yes. I think it's important that we demonstrate the difference between a car that has driver aids and technology at its disposal versus a car that doesn't. So I've lined up a couple of challenges and Sam, follow me and let's see how we fare. All right, Sam, I've set up a small course here to try and demonstrate what we would encounter in a real world situation. So in this challenge, you have to head to the end of the straight and accelerate as much as you can, as fast as you can, and brake at the 10 meter mark, which we would consider what we call a sudden braking zone, and see if you can negotiate this force without knocking over any cones. Okay, but you have a clear advantage because you have ABS, which basically means your wheels won't lock up, which also means that you'll be able to turn and steer and brake all at the same time. Uh, I understand that, and of course it's, it's an advantage and a new technology that, that has come on the new Mini. Uh, and it's interesting to note, that how this ABS technology works, because basically what the computer of the car does is, it senses uh, the brake pressure and how fast the deceleration of the wheel is, and it adjusts the brake pressure accordingly. So whereas my car has ABS and it can sense that the wheel is about to lock up, it'll release it in pulses and avoid the wheel from locking up, I kind of expect that your Mini is gonna go on and hit a couple of codes. So now we're going to have a simple demonstration of how ABS or anti-lock brake system can help us in our day-to-day -day driving. So basically what I'm going to go do is I'm going to speed up towards a set of cones and try and brake and turn at the same time. Now if you didn't have anti-lock brake system what would happen is your tires would lock up and you'd go straight on. But with ABS let's see what happens. Well, congratulations on proving the obvious. That's what you get when you have modern technology. You can avoid obstacles and turn at the same time because of ABS. Yeah, but we kind of knew what the outcome was going to be, right? Yes. I'd like to see you try that in your old Mini. Come on, do we have to? Yes, you must. We're trying to prove a point here, Sam. Okay, fine. You okay, mate? Yeah. You look a bit out of control there. No, I'm fine. But I mean, the last time that happened to me, I was just telling them I hit a light pole, so. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, thanks to the cone, the Mini is okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I think it's a, a practical demonstration of how ABS can kind of help in a day-to-day -day situation and save you, save a person, you know, and avoid uh, damage to a vehicle. Yeah, okay, fine. What else do you have planned for me? All right, I think we need to head up to the next corner because I've got another set of cones lined up and we're going to do another test. Okay, let's go. <laughs> All right, Sam, as you can see, this is our next challenge. I've set the cones up in a slalom and we have to get from the front to the back as fast as we can. What do you think? You know what, I like this one. I think, actually, I might just have a chance. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. Because the old Mini, the classic Mini, the one that you're driving, is famed for going through slaloms really, really fast. But I was thinking, that my car, even though it's bigger, faster, heavier, it might be able to keep up with your classic Mini thanks to the traction control that it has. No, you know what? That's a good point. It's a good point that you raise. And I feel that we should add a little bit more jeopardy to this because it is a bit of a test of skill as well as the car. True, true. Yeah. What do you propose, Sam? Well, I think as this is a little bit of a test of driver skill as well as the cars, why don't we add two seconds for any cone we hit, if we hit any. All right. I think that's a fair penalty. So uh, the challenge, front to the back, without hitting any cones, as fast as you can. Let's see who does better. 
All right, traction control on, stability control on, sports mode on. Let's have a go at this slalom, see how we fare. Still tighter than I thought. I think I knocked a cone over there. Sam's probably laughing. Okay, looking in the rearview mirror, I can see one cone move the side and one down. I hope I can beat Sam. So if I don't hit any cones, I might just win. And if I'm faster. Oh, bit of wheel spin. Just a second. Oh, no power steering. Oh, I hit one cone there. There's no power steering. Never mind traction control or lack of traction control. It's lack of energy. Sam? Huh. That looked like a good run. It felt fast, but it was also very, very painful. <laughs> I think I pulled a muscle. I think that's what happens when you don't have power steering. Yeah, that's... But you knocked down only one cone and I knocked down two. Uh, can we get the times? 19 for Ishak, 16 for Sam. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh. I got it, I did it. All right, Sam, I got to give that to you. Uh, you beat me in the slalom challenge, even though I had traction control and I had power steering, which just goes to show that nothing to do with the driver aids there. I think this classic Mini really is something, eh? Yeah, it is, but you know, I do understand what you mean about modern cars, modern tech, and this is a very specific scenario. I mean, it's not something that you'd face on the open road every day. So yeah, there is something in what you say, and to be honest, if I was going home, I'd probably pick the newer car. I know. I thought you would too, but tough luck, because I'm taking that home. <laughs> okay, fine. Well, it doesn't matter because anyway, I can't seem to stop loving these classics either. <laughs> Alright guys, that's it from this episode of the Eggside Masterclass Shakedown. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And if you want to see something else on track, then don't forget to check out our Turbo versus Naturally Aspirated video, also on the Eggside Masterclass YouTube channel.